Welcome friends, thanks for stopping by. I came across this article by one of my favorite bloggers, Lisa Sharp of the Retro Housewife Goes Green, called 1950s Homemaking Rules You Should Follow. I put the link to the article in the description box below. Also, if you're returning or it's your first time here, kindly hit the like, share, subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell that alerts you every time that I upload. This really helps my channel grow, so thanks a bunch, friends. <laughs> Appreciate you. So, are you overwhelmed by your home and life? These 1950s homemaking rules can help you have a more put-together home and less stressful life. There are lots of videos about the 1950s. It was such a glamorous time and it's so highly romanticized. Also, there is so much good from that era that would benefit our lives. Many people want to live more simply, myself included. We are so connected now and overwhelmed with entertainment and media, it can be easy to get lost in it all. The 1950s seemed idyllic and simpler, and in many ways it was. And the great thing is, now we can learn from the things they did well in the 1950s and keep the good we have now from learning from the mistakes of past eras. One thing we can learn a lot about from the 1950s is homemaking. We are into automating everything now and have lost some of the things that could actually make our lives better and less stressful. These 1950s homemaking rules aren't some crazy list that will make you laugh and think, no way. They're usable in the modern era and can actually make your life a lot easier. So here goes, 1950s homemaking rules. One, have a routine. Having a routine can help you automate your day so you don't have to really think much about what needs to be done. You know what needs to be done and when you need to do it. You will likely need to change these routines from time to time as your life changes, but as long as it's working well for you and your family, stick to it. After the video, click the link in the description box for Lisa's free 1950s cleaning routine printable list. Two, clean as you go. It's much easier to keep up with a clean house than to try and play catch up when it's become a disaster. This is something our great grandmothers were experts at. Another bonus to this is your home is always ready for guests. No one likes when people show up unexpectedly and the house is a mess. This is my main motivation and I always want to feel good about welcoming people into my home. It doesn't have to be perfect at all times, and especially if you have young kiddos, there will be messes, but you can keep them at a minimum by tidying throughout the day. Three, get dressed every day. This one seems to be a bit controversial these days. Leggings all day seems to be the dream of many, and if they are a full-time homemaker, it seems to be the norm. I admittedly fell into this trap during the pandy for a while as well. Getting dressed each morning and doing one's hair is actually a great mood booster. They say dress for the job you want. Well, if you want to be a put together homemaker, then you don't want to be in workout clothes all day. Find something comfortable but also attractive. The go-to for many homemakers in the 1950s was a house dress. I have several dresses that I like to wear at home because they are very comfortable options and the best thing about dresses is there is no trying to match pieces to create an outfit. Side note, look out for my vintage dress haul video that I will be uploading soon. <laughs> if you feel comfortable in pants, try and find some that are comfortable but still look cute and dress it up with a cute top instead of a ratty t-shirt. It's all about being comfortable, but still feeling good about how you look. These are some cute capri and pants from Amazon and Shein that I am loving right now. Four, have a plan. This goes along with having a routine. Having a plan for your days is important. 
You want to plan deep cleaning, your meals, errands you need to run, appointments, and all those other tasks that you don't do every day. Sharing a family calendar on your phones is super helpful. I like using my Google Calendar and Apple Notes app for my to-do list. Use whatever system works for you and stick to it. Having a place for everything you need to do and events is important if you don't want to forget things. It also can be good for our brains to not have to try and remember all that information. Five, stop putting things off. Sheesh, <laughs> I am working on getting better at this daily. Things can come up and that's one thing, but if you keep putting things off just because you're procrastinating, you need to break the habit. We tend to do this with phone calls because we hate making them. The thing is, it's much worse to keep thinking about the calls that need to be returned than actually making them. <laughs> if this is an issue you have, make a list of all the things you keep putting off and try to tackle as many as you can. After that, go back to number four and plan these things you often end up putting off and make yourself tackle them on the days you assign them to. Six, be kind to yourself. Every generation has had issues with burnout and 1950s housewives were not immune to this. The ones that fared the best were the ones that took care of themselves. If you think self-care is a new idea, it's not. Women often went to get their hair done once a week. This was necessary for many of the era's styles, but it also was a form of self-care. Women would talk as they had their hair done, which was like bonus therapy. And it was something to do away from the normal busyness of life. We are seeing a bit of this idea again with blow dry bars. It can be seen like a silly thing now because we have gone so far away from the days of shampoo and set hair salon visits. However, it's not silly to want to look your best and relax for a bit. Other forms of self-care were also common in the 1950s. Baths have been a form of relaxation for generations. Sunday drives were a nice relaxing way to spend a few hours. Hobbies like knitting and sewing were popular and also useful. Reading, lunch with friends, there were so many ways women of the past took care of themselves and it's something we need to still do today. You are your best self when you are well cared for. Let go of the guilt of taking time for yourself and remember why it's important. So, which of these rules strike your fancy? And which do you follow that aren't on the list? Leave a comment below. Well, thank you for watching the video till the end. I really appreciate it, friends. Take good care and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Toodles!